today what we'll do is we'll we'll start with like doing some practical examples. I asked you guys to download some things. Raise your hand if you successfully downloaded everything that was asked. Excellent. Um, just in case you forgot or you didn't, like what I want you to do is go to this place right here, ML4A demos, and then download what's relevant here, which is JS apps, Mac install, uh, or, or Windows install, and uh, Wakinator processing. And actually, I have two new examples that I just posted into JS apps like an hour before I came here. So uh, maybe I can actually ask everyone to re-download JS apps. It's only 60 megabytes, so it should be not so bad. Um, so in the next, you know, you don't need it immediately, but if you can go ahead and re-download JS apps, there's just two new examples in there. Um, so please download that. Um, Sorry, how long ago did you update? Like, like half an hour, like one hour ago or two hours ago, something like that, yeah. Um, there's two new examples in there that we'll that we'll look at later. Um, okay, so like everyone's settling down. Okay, what we're, we'll we'll do now basically is what you should have is this, right? JS apps. Let me try to make this a little bigger. Um, JS apps, and then either Mac install or Windows install. And then for if you're on Mac, um, you basically just need to copy brackets into your applications. And then just unzip processing and Wakinator and put them somewhere that you know where they'll be. Um, and for Windows, I don't know the process as well. I think unzipping again, processing Wakinator, and then this is an MSI, so I think it's just an installer file. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so either whatever your system is, uh, I think it probably doesn't matter too much. Like most modern systems are 64, but I think you can get away with using 32 as well. But just whichever version of Windows you have, 32-bit or 64-bit. Yeah. Any other questions? OK. So what we're going to do is, in the course of today, I want to go through the examples that are inside JS apps and uh, Wakinator processing. And there are kind of two categories of things that we're going to look at. One is JavaScript stuff that uses mainly TensorFlow.js, which, which I mentioned yesterday briefly. TensorFlow.js is a library being developed uh, primarily by Google, but it's an open source project, um, which you can find at js.tensorflow.org. TensorFlow is, is, a, is a framework uh, a, like built uh, to do deep learning and machine learning in a very efficient way that makes use of graphics cards and so on. And it's being used uh, by like by scientists. It's like the default framework for most uh, academic research these days. That and Torch is another one that's also quite competitive. Uh, and then TensorFlow.js is the JavaScript port of it. And the way it gets GPU uh, integration is by using WebGL, which is really cool. So WebGL is a uh, like uh, used mainly for graphics, like uses your graphics card to do graphics in the browser in a very f effective way. And this uses the same capability to do like very heavy mathematics. <laughs> um, <coughs> and uh, there's actually very close integration between TensorFlow and TensorFlow.js. So if you train something in TensorFlow, you can import, or in Keras, which is like a high level library made with TensorFlow, you can actually import those models into the browser. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, and that's, we probably won't do that, but that's something worth knowing about because if you, if you are actually more interested in this, this you know, stuff that doesn't necessarily do, you don't necessarily do it on the web, um, you can actually still end up using that same stuff in, within the browser. So that's kind of a nice thing to know. Um, so let me just take you quickly through the installation. Uh, or w once, you have, once you have these applications, you should be able to open this uh, brackets thing, right? So brackets looks like this. Um, does everyone see something like this? Like, well, it'll be blank in the beginning, but you'll see code the web, something like that. Anyone have any problems opening brackets? Raise your hand if that works for you. Okay, cool. Um, so most of you, no one seems to have any problems, so I'll assume that like mo uh, most of you have it working. It's actually, um, I'll, I'll go through what brackets does. It's actually optional to use it. You can also instead use your own Code editor, uh, your own text editor, 
and then just use, uh, I'll, and I'll show you how to do this, how to, how to make a web server. So that's a, totally equivalent, I'll show both. Um, and then you can kind of, whichever choice you want to use. A lot of people prefer Sublime or whatever, like uh, editors. So um, inside JS Apps, you'll see a whole bunch of folders. And the, if you didn't download uh, the newest version, you'll have all of them except for this PoseNet thing. So you should have all of these minus these two unless you downloaded it and then you should have both of these new ones. And we're going to basically like uh, over the next hour or so, I guess, depending on how things go, what I wanna do is kind of like take you through these examples and show you, uh, the, co show you the code and then we'll do like a little bit of live coding. We'll try to like, um, you know, kind of uh, brainstorm some and possibly improvise a little bit, some like uh, innovations to the code that will make interesting things. And we're, we're, these are all kind of small templates that, that do basic stuff and we'll show how they work and so on. Um, so that's gonna be kind of the, the rough plan for today. Um, so we'll keep things like, this is much less of a presentation as it was yesterday. Like I'll be, I'll be kind of just like going more formally through this code. So like if you have any comments or questions, like feel free to, even though we have a big group, like just raise your hand and we can keep things kind of informal um, if you have any questions. Uh, are there any questions? Okay. So let's do the basic thing, which is load. I'm, I want to load this first example, image classification. And I just want, like, if you open that, you'll see that there's just a folder with an HTML file, a JavaScript file, and some images. So first of all, let me just mention, um, I like uh, slightly lied when I said that these are all TensorFlow.js. Actually, like um, we're using for for about half of these, I think, or three quarters of them, actually. The examples are part of a project called ML5. So let me actually tell you about that first, and then we'll load the example. Um, ML5 is a if you go to ML5 J ML5JS.org. So if you go to that website, you'll see that this is a project. That is, oh, I guess, I guess that internet thing is starting to happen again. <laughs> I hope this isn't too bad for us. Any case, um, ML5 J, uh, J, ML5JS is a project to uh, to create a, a friendly wrapper on top of TensorFlow.js. Actually, technically, it's for the precursor to TensorFlow.js. I mentioned yesterday TensorFlow.js is one month old. And before TensorFlow.js, there, there was a library that was being made by the same people called DeepLearn.js. And now they, are, they fully integrated it into, ten, into TensorFlow.js. So they're still catching up. But basically, this will be a, a library that makes it easier to use TensorFlow.js. The reason, the thing is TensorFlow.js and TensorFlow are very low level languages. Uh, they're, or they're, they're not languages exactly, that's JavaScript, but they're very low level frameworks. So they kind of, uh, do a lot of the really, really gritty stuff that mostly scientists look at. And, w and so it's useful to have a library which takes common things that people do and kind of makes functions, like friendly functions that we can kind of load into our code very easily. And ML5 is a project that is, uh, that is basically, uh, and it's actually being done at NYU right now where I'll be teaching in the fall, so I know a lot of the, uh, the people who are developing it, um, Dan Schiffman and, and co for those who are familiar with that name. And they're basically making this library. It's really nice and easy to use. And I'm going to show you some of the examples from it. They're part of the collection. And we're gonna hack with them a little bit. And then I'll show you a few things that don't use this yet, but will probably get integrated later. Um, so I would encourage you to look through this later. It's a really, really nice resource. Anyhow, um, let's go here. So basically, this is just a web, web page. That's all, right? Now you can't just load it, I don't think you can load it directly like open it in the browser. You have to run a local web server. Um, so for just a, like a quick sentence, this isn't so much a class about web development, but for those who aren't familiar with the, with the process, like most web pages are served by a server. Uh, so like when you open an HT, a local HTML file, you're just opening it in the browser, rendering it, but, that doesn't but things don't necessarily work right when you do that. So it's better to, uh, run a local server, and that's basically something that, that Brackets is for. Brackets, all Brackets does is, it's a code editor, it's like a text editor, and it launches a web server. 
So uh, let me show you the, the, um, the manual way of doing this first to load this example page. And then I'll show you the, um, the brackets way of doing it. And then you can pick which one you want to use and then, and then, then you know, which is, which is fine. Um, the normal thing you can do would be from a terminal. So if you're comfortable with the terminal, you would basically, and, and this, this should work, uh, this should work roughly the same way for Windows if, it, uh, if, uh, if you have Python. Um, Windows sometimes doesn't come with Python installed. So for those of you for whom this doesn't work, don't worry, we'll just show you the brackets way. Uh, but this should work for everyone who has Mac or Linux, for sure, and it should work for you on Windows if you have Python installed. Um, so basically you would CD, right, change directory, and then go to one of these folders, and you can just drag it in. So like if I take this and I drag it over, and I get this CD, blah, 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 I go there and then you can run a local server by running the command python dash m simple capitalized the s capital http server with a capital s and then um, and then basically you'll get this message serving http on port 8000 and then you can go to your browser and you would go to localhost 8000 and you should see the image net example Oh, and I changed it. I put in a different image, um, but you should you should get an image of a I forget something like a oh oh that's right it, yeah I did change it that's actually one of my images I forgot to it doesn't matter um, so okay it may take a while to download because I think we're all downloading the the um, model at the same time but you should at some point get this is a conch um, a conch is actually like a I, I didn't know what it was. It's like actually like some sort of a seashell. Um, so raise your hand if you're seeing this is a conch. My confidence is 48 or something similar. Okay. Raise. Yeah. So this is the command that you want to run. And I'll show you a second way of doing this, and then and then you can just pick one for the rest of the examples. Does everyone have this Python dash m simple HTTP server? Make sure the s HTTP and s are capitalized. Okay. How many for uh, how many people are not seeing this is a conch? Raise your hand. Okay, a few people. It's just, but you, how many people don't even see the image or haven't been able to load the page? Okay, any questions about, uh, did the Python command not work? The directory is image classification. So basically you need to cd and then just go to this. So I, I'll, now, I'll now show you the way of doing this from brackets. So, uh, which is the same thing, and you might find it easier. So if you're having trouble with this way of doing it, I'm going to now show you the brackets way. You, sorry, I've got a question. Yeah. The simple H, uh, the HTTPS server, is that part of HTTP server? Is that part of the Python package or is it part of brackets? It's part of, it's Python. It's, it's part of Python. standard Python, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have Windows, you may get an error when you run Python because you may not have Python. Did anyone... No, no, I do have Python. Anyone on the Windows? Anyone on Windows not have Python? Okay, so don't worry about it. You will just use brackets. So I'm about to show brackets now. Okay, so okay, so now what I want to do is show you how to do this with brackets. And the way to do this with brackets would be that you open brackets, right? And then basically you would just take the image classification folder and you would drag this into brackets. And you can do this from Windows or, or Mac the same way. And then what you would see is that suddenly on the left side of brackets, you see images, sketch, and index. And then what you can do is there's a, you can click on one of these files and it'll bring up, it's a text editor, so you can click on the files and see what it has. And then what you can do is you can click the, this little lightning bolt in the top right. It says live preview. And then you'll get a new browser pop up and then you'll get basically the same thing. And then after a while you should get a classification. Okay, so, so again, both of these ways are both fine for 
uh, what we'll be doing. You can use either the server or brackets to load the pages for, for all of them the same way. Uh, any, anybody still having trouble? Like, how many people have not been able to load either one? Do you know, do you know why? Do you have a question? No, I actually missed what you said. Okay, maybe someone next to you can help. Local, uh, sure, sure. Like if anyone has a local server, you can, you can also, any local server will, will work fine. Okay. How many people are good? They're ready to go? Raise your hand high if you're ready to go. Okay, I'll just give like 15 seconds for people to finish up. And then we'll, then we'll start playing with this. So I, I'm going to use brackets because brackets is the easier way for people to see the code at least. So feel free to either use bra uh, brackets or the simple server and the text editor of your choice. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to continue with the code. Okay, so check this out. In brackets. In, you guys can hear me? Everyone ready over there to go? All right, people are still helping out. I'll just wait like 30 seconds, yeah? Okay. I'll just wait like 30 seconds for people to sort things out, and then we'll continue. I don't want to move too fast, but I also don't want to move too slow for the people who are ready. So we'll try to balance those two goals. Um, okay. For those who are still getting ready to go, I just want to I just want to make a few notes about the code and show you what's inside, um, so that we can kind of have a basic understanding of what's inside. So, for those of you, first of all, how many people here? I saw on the roster that maybe like it sounded like a quarter of people were had some background with JavaScript or or like HTML programming. How many people here have some web programming experience? Okay, like a pretty good number. So this should be mostly familiar to you. For those who don't, uh, don't worry. Like I'm, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna step you through the code, uh, and know that if you learn JavaScript, you can modify these, you can build applications around them. Um, so that's just kind of like, uh, th and this is will be the most sort of like, it'll be like a little unit that you can carry around from application to application. So there's a few things happening in the HTML file. We are loading, uh, so there's, a, there's another library that, that are, that's being used for a lot of these, which is something called P5.js, which also I, is, I imagine a lot of people here are familiar with. Um, for those of you who are in the SCM program, you're probably quite familiar with P5.js. How many people here are, uh, know what P5.js is? Okay. For those who do not know what P5.js is, let me just describe uh, what it is. P5.js is, is a library that seeks to uh, bring the power of processing into JavaScript. Processing is a Java creative coding uh, framework. And P5.js is like one, one of the most accessible uh, libraries for learning how to do creative coding in JavaScript. Um, it's really, really easy to use, has a really nice reference. You can actually program examples in directly inside of P5.js. So like if you go to p5.js.org, you could go, for example, to the, the uh, reference, for example, let's see. And there's going to be all these examples of how to use different things. And you can actually modify them inside. So for example, I'll just pick a random one. Like if you go to, um, let's like, like a create image, you see there's like, there's actually like some, this shows how to do this code and you can actually make modifications to the code right here. I'll be like, if I want to change the color, I'll change the color to this, hit run. And it's changed the, it's actually changed it inside of the browser. So it's kind of a really nice way to learn. There's more uh, examples and stuff in, in, inside, inside here. Um, and we're actually going to be using some of the examples later. Uh, but that's just for you, that's just an aside. For those of you who are interested, like this is all, all of the sort of programming that we'll be doing 
is using p5.js for simplicity. Uh, you don't have to, you can use any JavaScript. It's just the library that's kind of used for convenience. So if you, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna close my server so I don't have a double running. Okay. And uh, okay, so back to brackets. Oh, should I make the text bigger? Uh, yeah. Is that okay? Is that visible to everyone? In the back, yeah? Okay. So back I go to index and on the right side. So one thing you can do, by the way, you can actually view both at the same time. Uh, if you uh, click on uh, view and you do a vertical split, you'll have two editing panes, just kind of nice. Uh, if, if you want to view both at the same time. So like you can view the index page on one side and the, uh, sketch page, and the sketch on the other side. So what's happening here is that at the top in the head, in the header, it loads P5 from the web. Uh, it should take, you know, just a second, a few seconds to load. And it also uh, loads the P5 DOM library. DOM is the, the way that P5 interacts with the HTML. And then, uh, and then it's also loading from online ml5.js, right? And, oh, sorry. <laughs> it says, hello, Shanghai Tech, because I used this a few days ago um, at Shanghai Tech. No, don't, don't be uh, offended. Let's, let's, uh, let's just write, <laughs> let's just write. Um, uh, city, city U, that's the proper way to say it, right? Okay, City U, hello, City U. <laughs> So um, how embarrassing, it's like calling out a different person's name or something. Anyway, um, so, uh, and then in the body there, there's just a few, there's like, it's really simple HTML, right? It basically goes, okay, hello city you, this is a, and then it uses the span tag so we can address this text later in the, as a result. So you can, you can pull up, you can grab the HTML element that's called result later, which is gonna happen in the JavaScript code and then it loads sketch.js, right? Here's the script that loads uh, sketch.js. And now we can look at sketch.js and see how that works, right? And now this is, this is not generally speaking a P5.js course. So for those of you who are familiar with P5.js, you'll already know like the basics set up and draw. For those who are, who are not, um, I encourage you again, like after the class, to try to to try to look at it. It's it's actually really really easy to get started with. It's like the easiest creative coding library in the world, basically. Um, so you so you can learn. But very quickly, what happens is that when p5.js is loaded, you get um, a uh, there's a function called setup, which is run once in the beginning. So that's what you use to do, sort of create everything. And then you have a, and then you also typically have a draw function. However, um, here in this case, it actually doesn't use it. So you don't have to use it in this case, but often you'll have a draw function, which is called repeatedly um, inside of the canvas. So what happens in the code, and you can, you can pretty much see what's going on here. It's really, really uh, short. First, it loads the classifier from ML5 called um, MobileNet. And then I'll tell you what MobileNet is. Um, well, let me let me do that first. So MobileNet is a pre-trained uh, neural network that is shipped with TensorFlow. And what MobileNet does is it does image classification, and uh, the image classification is very accurate. It's it's similar to what we looked at yesterday when I did the demo. It can uh, tell from a thousand different categories of things, right? So if you want, one thing you can do is you can replace a different image with this if you'd like, right? So here's how you would do that. You would go to the folder where it says images, right? I already have another image in there, kitten, right? You can drag another image in there if you'd like, and then you would just change the path. So if you go kitten.jpg, you can save that and then if the uh, lightning bolt icon is already running, you can just go back to the browser. Oh, uh, here it is. And then it actually updates it automatically. So now it goes, this is a tiger cat. My confidence is 48%. So this is a tiger. So Not bad, right? It's, it's in the same, like, uh, 
uh, order, right? Or fam, fam, phylum, family? Family, I think. Uh, feline. Um, that's good enough, right? Now you can try to put in your own images, put in an image of yourself, put in an image of like some random things. Uh, you can get some pretty funny results when you put in things that aren't photographs. You know, like put in some glitch photos or something like that. Okay? So just play around with that. Maybe put in, put in a different image and see how that comes out. So what happens is that the code works this way. There's a setup. And then it says no canvas because in P5.js there's often a canvas which you can draw on. And if there is no canvas, then there isn't an additional canvas. It's just using the raw HTML. And then image equals create image will load the, this image. And then it will call the image ready function. So what happens in create image one thing about JavaScript is that JavaScript, uh, uh, as opposed to Java and processing and Python and, and all of those, it's a uh, asynchronous language. I think that's, is that correct? Or synchronous? I always confuse them. Who knows this? It's, it mean, it's asynchronous, right? So basically, when you, this is kind of a thing that always confuses newcomers to JavaScript. It confused me a lot when I first started using it. So normally in, in programming, when you run a function, it will execute that function and then it will wait until it's done to go on to the next function. But JavaScript doesn't do that. JavaScript just executes every function and then it, it, it threads them so that they can be running at the same time. So the way to, no, normally what you end up doing in JavaScript is using what are called callback functions. And a callback function is you tell this function that you're running when you are done, call this function. Uh, and then you can use that to create order and sequence in your, in your program. So create image says to your browser, load this image and then call the function image ready, which is right here, when you're done. And, uh, and, the, and the reason why this can be confusing is because remember when you try to load an image in a browser, it actually has to download the image first. And even if it's local, it'll take some time. And if it's on the internet, it'll take, it could take a while. And so if you try to run something with that image right after you've called load the image, then you might have this problem where the image hasn't downloaded yet when you start to, to use it. And so uh, to get around that, we use callbacks. So basically nothing happens until this image ready function gets called. So basically this gets run. And then when, when the function, when, cre when, uh, Kitten is finished loading. It calls image ready. Here's the function image ready. And then it takes the classifier, mobile net. Here it is. And it says predict image.elt. And, and then, uh, and okay, so let me tell you what these three arguments mean. So image is the actual variable that stands for the image itself. And then the image has a field called ELT, which is the raw data. That's like the pixels. So to get the pixels of the data, uh, you would do image.elt. And then, uh, I can't remember what, I think this means number of results. Yeah. So this, yeah, exactly. This says 10 means give me a list with the top 10 results. So we can actually print all of them. So we, we'll do that in a second. So it goes 10. And then when it's done, called the function is another callback got result and then so got result gets called and it says select result dot html results zero label so what's going on here is that the function select will take the html element called result so if you look at the html this right here is result, span ID going until here. So right, so in the beginning when you load it, it's just got dot, dot, dot inside of it. And so what will happen is it will take that element and then insert the HTML of the label of the first result. And that's results zero dot label. Right? And then uh, it'll select the probability and HTML, the, con, uh, the probability there. 
This NF thing that you see is just a little uh, P5JS thing for formatting large numbers because it's basically like a decimal number that has 10 digits. And so NF will take that and make it two digits. Okay, does that make sense? Any, any questions about that? I know I'm probably moving too slow for some people and too fast for others. So I'm gonna try to like find a happy medium um, to, yeah. Do uh, you have a question? So the image isn't loading. So you probably have a typo in the image. In the Im if you're getting the HTML but not the image, then are you sure the image is actually inside the folder images? And so I would, I would. So if you're having a problem, do the following: when you're inside brackets, go to the browser, and you can go to view. Developer, developer tools, or actually uh, go view, developer, and JavaScript console. So click that, and you should see something in red. And most likely yours is saying that it can't find the image. So if you can't find the image, then check if you have a typo. Okay, any other questions? Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, um, you're talking about this function got results? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe, uh, I'm pretty sure select is a P5. P5, uh, uh, yeah. It's a P5 dumb, exactly, yeah. It's from the P5 DOM library. So one thing about this, so let, let's let's hack this just a little bit, right? Like we're we'll, we're going to look at more complicated examples, but let's like let's see what we can do with this, right? So um, and then later we'll try to connect these. Now, now the thing is, like the image classifier is kind of it's a big magic trick, right? And then then it's like not clear what we can do with it. We'll see more hackable examples in in a few. But, um, but that's kind of up to you. Like you might have some ideas that you can already build a web page around this. Um, we're going to look at a more complicated example in a second, but let's just really quickly hack something. So first of all, this goes classifier.predict and it gives us 10 results. So we're actually only printing the first one. So maybe we can actually change this so that it prints all 10 of them, right? So the way that you might do that is you'll go, how about, how about this? We'll add another paragraph in the HTML. And then we'll call that paragraph um, all results. So you would do oops, uh, p i p i d equals all results. Don't I'm, I'm going to do this quickly. You don't really have to follow along because this is a very short hack. It's just like up to you if you want to if you want to follow it. But now I can be like, okay, how about we'll create a loop, which uh, I'm going to change the spaces to four or to two because that's how it's written. Um, and we can create a loop which will go for var i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And you can go, um, let's create another var which is like the string. Uh, let's call it just s. And we'll start with an empty string. And then we'll say for each of these results we'll add results uh, results i dot uh, label and then uh, and then that, let's actually put this in parentheses and I'm going to say plus so equals like what is the confidence of it so plus results i probability and then maybe like we'll add a a, a, a new line and then job and in HTML you can actually just do inside of the quote BR 
slash. All right, you can just do br, I think. I don't know what the difference is. Someone might know that better than me. Um, so, okay, so now what happens is you'll have this variable called s, which is a string, and we are adding all of the 10 results to it as new line characters, and then we can say, I haven't tried this, so I hope it works, but I should work. Select all, uh, so hashtag all results dot HTML S. So if I save that, and I save this, I should, uh, I, we should be able to see, oops, sorry. Yeah. Now it prints us all of the results. So the top 10 results ordered by confidence. So let me just, I'll show that back to you guys. Okay. Yes. Okay, so is it probably just because I don't have a graphics card that's hard enough, fast enough to... Uh, how old is your computer? Pretty old. That could be... Check the, develop, check the JavaScript console and see if there are any errors. So like, you, you can check the JavaScript console by going to View, Developer Tools, JavaScript Console. And then uh, you should like see that you either got an error um, or or maybe it is just really old. Uh, I, I think this should work for most devices though. I, I'm a little surprised to hear that because I think it even works on mobile possibly. Um, slower, but, but, it, but it does work. Okay, so if anyone is getting errors, again, uh, check the developer, the JavaScript console is your friend because it will tell you errors, it'll put them in here. Oh, sorry? Uh-huh. What does the error say? Okay. So, uh, we'll, I'll, um, we'll try to die. We'll try to diagnose like, uh, individuals later. Maybe, maybe you can come up to me after, uh, during the break, if you're still having trouble. We're going to move on to some other examples. So if that one doesn't work to you, uh, don't worry about if this one's not working for you. Like, don't worry about it. We're gonna look at some more examples. So, uh, don't don't get too stuck on one one of them because we have a bunch of them. Okay. So I want to move on to something very similar. So if you if you feel like you have got the basic idea, you have this HTML and this JavaScript file that interact and make something cool happen in the browser. Now let's do the same thing with the webcam. So you can. Go back to your finder and see this image classification video. So I just want to note, first of all, image uh, classification multiple images is is basically the same. Uh, yeah, it, it's the same as what we just saw, except it does it with multiple images. I don't think there's a big difference. Image classification video will read your webcam and do it. So basically, let's let's take image classification video and drag that into brackets. Okay? And this will ask if you want to save your changes. You can go ahead and do that if you'd wish to. Okay? And then you should get this. Sometimes brackets has little bugs like it's making my brackets a little too big for some reason. You might get a live preview error. It's not should not be a big deal. Okay, anyhow, there we go. So you can do the same thing if you want to do a vertical split. You can look at the index page here and let's say the sketch page here. And let's just run this and see what that looks like. So I don't know if you're having the same bug as me, but I guess brackets has little bugs. This thing is making my bracket too big. So I'm going to just make that a little smaller. And click the little lightning bolt. And you can get out of the old one. 
This will ask for permission to use your camera. So go ahead and allow it to do that, unless you're worried. And now it goes, my guess is a television. Right, so. <laughs> iPod. It's pretty good. I think it's more accurate than actually the last thing. Green Mamba. Cucumber. Beer bottle. Kimono. Oh, that's interesting. So go ahead and play with this a little bit. First of all, uh, how many people are having, uh, people, any, anyone having trouble with the webcam example? Should be about 10% of you roughly, like for each example. Some, um, I'm curious what the problems are, if anyone is, if they're, I'm always looking out for if everyone is having the same problem, uh, because that would mean that, that probably that I did something wrong. Uh, but often people have different problems. So just play, play, play around a little bit with that. And th does anyone have any questions right now while other people are playing? Like if you're having any trouble loading this? Sorry? L let, me, let me just check with you. So okay, I, I wanna I wanna show of hands like there's at least two people who have had who have had a particular error that says in the console uh, what was it uh, wait can you remind me again uh, what the what was the error message you put in it can you read it up fail to execute get image data uh, any anyone else seeing that message there's a handful of people here. 
just now? Just like the the fade by icon, don't, don't worry about that. That's, but this is requested. Okay, so that's the second time I've seen that. So there's two errors that I've seen twice now, which is that one, the get image data doesn't work, and then uh, texture size of zero, something like that. So I'm not sure. Uh, so I, I don't know offhand what, what's going on. That might be a bug in ML5 because it seems to be working for most people, but, but yeah. To me, it doesn't work in Firefox. It doesn't work in Firefox. Yeah, but it works on Safari, and I don't have Chrome, so it works on uh, Oh, that's another, that's an interesting uh, thing. So if you're having problems in one browser, try, it, try to load the same URL in a different browser. So like you can try it in Safari. So here, if I, if I, if I exit, um, Oh, actually, well, you can't exit, I guess. Uh, that'll. So, like, if you were to run, if you were to put this in Safari, wait, it might not let you use the camera twice. Um, yeah. Oh, for me, it actually it looks like it does not work in Safari. They all work. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. so there there are the, occasionally like with some people you might experience like that it won't let you access the webcam. So one problem that you may have is that the webcam is not uh, is uh, either being used by another application, and sometimes one application cannot use the webcam when it's being used by another. So you want to make sure that it's not you don't have some zombie camera application running in another in another window. Um, now these two errors that I saw, I'm actually not sure what the problem is offhand. It might, it's either a bug in ML5 or uh, it's kind of hard to say, but, but, but we, we can maybe see if there, like one thing, this is just a general, general technique. If you're ever experiencing a bug, try to copy and paste it into, uh, into like a Google and see if anyone else has had it before, because it might be something really common. Um, I, I can't get that like a... Uh, so maybe just copy and paste it and see, or possibly like, possibly on the ML5 issues page we can look it up later. Um, but for offhand, I don't know. So um, let. What 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 was that? Sorry. Okay. So for okay, so one person who got the um, the error that had the texture size was zero or something like that. Refreshing the page was able to fix it. So. Maybe just try refreshing and you may, just reloading the page and you may, it may stop, it may be fine. Um, if you still continue to have errors, um, apologies, we'll move on to the next example and we'll try to diagnose it later. Okay. So just play around a little bit. Um, uh, like let's, let's give it another like one to two more minutes and then I'll move on to the next example. We're going to get into, right now these examples are uh, like, well, r right now these examples are kind of over, like they, they do a lot. We're going to look at examples that are a little bit more general and will let us uh, do something a little bit more creative um, in, uh, like that'll be the next thing we do, I think. Um, so just give it another minute or so. And uh, I want to see if any, there are any, who else is, who is still having trouble with the, let me, I'm going to try to see for you guys. If, Okay, so you may, if anyone's using Firefox, it may be not a good idea to use Firefox. Should work in, should work in Chrome. The, uh, the build of brackets is using Chrome, so, or Chromium, I think.
So okay, I know I know for a few of you like there's still so this is kind of the trouble with machine learning like it's using these libraries on top of libraries on top of libraries and for some percentage of people there will be some bug and actually there's it looks like maybe some of the bugs are ML5 bugs uh, that we 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 might have found the potential solution for one of them uh, f um, but for the most part there's kind of a long tail of of uh, of problems so some people don't have Chrome so if you don't if it, if um, if brackets doesn't launch a browser, I think that means you need to download Chrome. So that's that's another thing. Um, so what I want to do though is I want to move to the next set of examples um, because the next set of examples is going to be a little bit more interactive. Okay, so we've been we've been looking at you know, and again just just to note with this example, you know, there's not the code is relatively short, and um, there's a lot you could do to modify it. Okay, I don't know that why this keeps on. Ah. There's a lot you could do to modify it. You could, you could build some HTML around it, but for the most part, the image classifier example is relatively um, sort of like, you, most people will look at it and it's kind of cool, but, it, but you can't really build, uh, you can't ne necessarily build something cool around it, right? Because maybe you don't care about what's inside the image. You want to use something a little differently. Uh, use the neural network for some different purposes. So the next two examples I'm going to show you are going to uh, involve something that's a little bit more general. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll actually like uh, be able to hack just a little bit more. Um, okay, so, sorry, I think that was quite a sneeze. 
<laughs> um, so you should see these examples at the very top, classification simple, okay? And uh, this one is, uh, this one's a little different because it's not using ML5. I, I made it uh, this week. I'm going to, it's eventually going to be part of the ML5 library, most likely. I'm talking to them about like how to more or less join forces. And, um, but the classification simple is going to let us train a basic image classifier. Um, so what, what I want you to do is drag in, first of all, you can stop the previous program and then drag in classification simple into brackets and then click on index that HTML. Uh, be careful not to, uh, if you, these two JavaScript files, they're really big, I think. And so if you try to load them into brackets, they might take like 30 seconds. It might freeze for a second, but that's not um, because they're, they're quite big. Uh, and so when you load a text, a text file into a text editor, it might sometimes take a little while, but don't worry, it'll, it'll come back. Just hit the index page, and we'll look at the code in a second. It's a little bit more sloppy because I just made it, but I will show you what's there, um, and then we can kind of think about like uh, something that we can do with it. So first of all, I'll click into it, and you should see, first of all, it should, again, ask for your permission to use the camera, right? And then you should get a screen that looks like this, I hope, and again, like, if, History is any. Uh, if history has anything to say about it, ten percent of you will will not see this. Raise your hand if this loads uh, okay. Okay, lots of people. Raise your hand if if you're not seeing it. Okay, just just a few people. Okay, I'll uh, let me. For those who aren't seeing it, we'll have a little bit of time to hack later, and I'll come try to diagnose the problem for you. But for now, I want to. Uh, for most people, this actually worked, so that's quite exciting. So remember yesterday when we did the, is everyone seeing me? Yeah. Um, is it, uh, remember yesterday when we did the example with uh, Pac-Man, where we basically trained the camera to detect four different kinds of images, each of which were for uh, one of the joystick buttons, right? So uh, uh, we're going to, this is, this is basically the same thing except it's stripped away of all the Pac-Man stuff. It's the bare bones, like the skeleton of the Pac-Man example, uh, which, which makes it nice because then we could repurpose it for other things. So let me just show you how to use the basic thing and then we'll look at the code. So you see here there's class zero, class one, class two, class three, there's four classes. We can change that later, but like for now there's four classes and basically to add a sample, it will take a photo from the camera and it will add that sample to class zero. And you can either click it or you can hold it down. So I'm, I'm going to hold it down and record a bunch of examples. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the my water bottle, my tea bottle, in front of the camera and I'm gonna, cl and I'm gonna click and hold add sample. And now you see that the, it's beginning to count up. <clears throat> You see now it says like over a hundred examples recorded. Okay, you can maybe do that for a few seconds and then stop. And now I'm going to do the same thing for class one, except I'm gonna use a different image. So I'll do the, the my phone. Okay. And now, I'll do, for class two, it'll just be me. I'll just have myself in front of the camera. Take a bunch of examples. It's good to try to like, whatever you want it to be able to recognize, it's good to get a diversity of positions, right? So like I'm moving around because maybe later I'll be moving around and so I wanted to see, like the more relevant examples you can give it, the better. And finally, I'll do one with, with me out of the way. And this one's not going to vary too much, so you don't even need to do it that long. So once you have gotten a sufficient number of examples, you can hit train. And then it says, it'll say training. And then basically, it'll, you'll see a number go down. And then at some point, it, it'll stop. Okay, loss 0 0.0009. 
That means that this, it's trained the classifier and it has a pretty low loss. That's great. Now I'm going to hit run and now it'll begin to predict the class and if I change the, if I change the number, it'll change the color of the uh, class. Oh, it's actually, and it's only changing it between one and two. I forgot to change the color for the others. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. That's, that's, that's going to be a simple thing. Okay. Yeah, so right now it's actually only set up to distinguish. The, the color will only change between zero and one. And we're going to actually go ahead and change that in a second. But just like train a classifier and see if that basically works for you. So for those of you who, for whom that's working, I want to quickly step through the code and show you what's going on here and why this is so useful. Because okay, it's a red and green box. That's not so exciting, but the but the cool thing is that we have a, this is just a P5JS sketch, and it's and there's a function built into it that's receiving the classification value. So what we can do is we can actually go inside of brackets, and if you take the index HTML page and go all the way to the bottom you'll see this code at the bottom of it. Um, now, one thing, one thing is that this is, this is the same P5JS that we used in the previous two examples, the image classification examples. There's just one little difference is that I'm using it in instance mode. Um, that's probably, I, I, I think it shouldn't be necessary to do that. I just couldn't figure out how in the last few days. Instance mode is basically, uh, sh uh, you have to carry around this S dot, like basically you have var sketch, that's the sketch code, and it creates a function, and then the reference to itself, the reference to P5JS is uh, S inside here. So now all P5JS functions, you have to do S dot setup, oops, S dot setup, S dot draw, uh, and so on, right? So look at the, the, look at the draw function. It goes, if C is equal to zero, the class is equal to zero, make it red. If C is equal to one, make it green. And then here's my bug, I forgot to change it. should be if, if C is equal to two, I have one uh, copied, right? So if C is equal to two, make it green. And then we also have a third class, right? So why don't we add else if C equals three, S dot fill and you know put in some color of your choice okay so if you save that and go back to the browser the thing is like uh, I don't have any saving functionality here so you'll, you'll actually have to retrain the thing you'll have to reload it and retrain it which is, sorry, is a little annoying sorry um, but basically we can reload it and then quickly retrain it. Train. Run. Okay, so if you look at the anatomy of this program, you basically have this this uh, P5JS uh, sketch whose code is inside here. There's a setup function, creates a canvas, 
If you want, you can make the canvas much bigger. So like we can make this 800 by 500 if you want, and it'll make it wider. Uh, and you can, and then from there, it's just, it's like any other PIVOT.js program. You can create graphics, you can add sound, and so on. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you a slightly more sophisticated example of this, which I have included in the folder. Uh, but in principle, you can write your own programs if you are familiar with P5.js. So let me show you a more advanced example of this. This is the same. I'm going to show you the, the an, another example here. And it's right after classification simple, you have classification sound. We're about to start making a lot of sound in here. So that will be a good, a, a good uh, probably a good prelude to, to, to our break. Um, so basically, if you drag in, the, this is exactly the same, except the P5.js program is a little bit more sophisticated here. So if you drag in classification sound and look at the HTML here, it's exactly the same, except when you get to the bottom, the P5.js sketch has changed a little bit. And what it's doing is it's loading some sounds into an array called samples, load sound. And then it loads these six sounds and an image, which are all inside this folder called assets. So if you look at the folder, you'll see in classification sound, there's a folder called assets, which has a bunch of MP3 files and a, uh, an image. So let's run this and train it. And it's looking actually for um, for six classes. Oh, by the way, I've only uh, actually. Hang on a second. I'm gonna exit these, and I'm gonna do one one other thing really quickly, because there are there's actually six sounds that I want to play. I want to actually change the number of classes to be uh, oh um, oh actually okay Le leave it at that. We'll we'll do it with four. There's a, again, I need to, I still need to make some changes to this to be able to make more than six, four. Right now it's only gonna let us play four of them, but that's, that's fine, for demonstration it's fine. Okay, so again, train an image classifier. So, do some of this. Now some of this. And me. And then, and then we're gonna hit train again. And then hit run. Less loud. Uh, more, quiet. Uh, more quiet, yeah. I thought, yeah, but that doesn't seem to be changing it actually. Um, but you know, I can also. It doesn't. Use this thing? I thought I did. But it's still pretty loud. You can try muting just to see if it works. No, yeah, okay, so it's not using this. It's kind of neat, right? some guitars going off. Yeah, I don't know why it's not using that. Yeah, I guess that's good. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, that's the mic. Yes. So you have to... No, no, not this one. Or the mic. Because all the mics is only one source. No, it's not. This is still on. He's just trying to make the... Let's make it oh, a little okay. quieter. HDMI? No, no, no. We are using this one. Oh, okay. This HDMI. So, yeah, here. Can no. Can you try it now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's muted. Yeah, this one. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, this yeah. You have to call here. Yeah, no, make it a little. But you can still hear me? Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. so, 
I got it, I got it. Okay. This is the yeah, okay. control. Okay. Okay, so we're making some sound. So that's good. So, so like the so I think now is a good opportunity to take a little break and what I want to and just play around a little bit. And what I want to kind of get across is we have a bare bones template that lets you train an image classifier, a basic image classifier, which uh, which then you have interacting with a P5JS sketch. And so whatever knowledge you have of P5JS, you can now bring into this and make little apps based on that. So you can create little games, for example. So actually, let me, let me show you, uh, if you, if you want, this is a nice uh, opportunity to look at teachable machines, which I don't think I showed yesterday, or did, I didn't, right? If you Google for teachable machine, and you'll see this experiment, this was made by Andreas, my collaborator Andreas, for Google, and you click Let's Go, and it's basically, yeah, that's, that's uh, Alex Chen talking. So you can skip that, and then this, this web app that, that Google has made is the exact same thing. So you train a bunch of uh, examples, and it has a few cool things that it does. There's like a GIF, speech, and sound. So like you can be like, okay, train green, right? This is the exact same thing. Train purple. And train orange. So now it's like different cats. It's very cute, right? And or, or you could do a speech. Hello. You can make it say things. Be like, um, let's see, like city, <laughs> university. Spectacular, right? Actually, I have to show you the. Um, so, like, okay, what what's something cool you can make? Um, well, I have to remember the. It's like a, it's like a, one of uh, Andreas' students. Uh, I just don't have the link for this. One second. There, there's a really good like. Uh, maybe I have the link. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, okay. Uh, there, there's a really cute project uh, that one of Andreas' students made, which was like, he all he did was train it to recognize a banana, and then he would have it say "banana, not banana." And for some, like every for every audience that sees this, cr starts cracking up because he's looking very serious. He puts a banana in front of the camera and goes, "Banana, not a banana. Banana, not a banana." So it's like a useless machine, basically. But you know, this is a good a good way to make jokes, I guess. Um, Okay, so let's pause. Uh, we'll take a break. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, uh, we're gonna look at uh, a few more of these, and then and then hopefully I have some time left over for Wekinator. Um So yeah, we'll break. <laughs> 